All right, so today we're going to be talking about classes and objects. So we're going to start with an introduction to object-oriented programming. So if you want to get a little bit more information about classes and objects, the uh, Beginning Java 8 Fundamentals book, Chapter 6, is a fantastic place to start. All right, so where are we at in the course right now? So we've been developing Java programs mostly from inside a main method, although we have had other um, uh, methods and, and uh, other classes and that that we've implemented either in VPL or in uh, the Java shell or in IntelliJ. So in Java, we may uh, define more than one class. So often we've been working with programs that only have one class, but we can we can have more than one. Within each class, there can be one or more methods, and these methods are similar to the functions that you saw in EECS 1011 MATLAB. So in object-oriented programming in Java, we use classes to define templates. Those templates are a little bit like plans or, or blueprints. And we take those classes and we instantiate them, or we, we have instances of them or examples, like real examples of them, that we call objects. At runtime, we create objects and call the methods on objects to simulate these interactions um, that are happening between these objects, but these are similar to interactions that you would see in like real world uh, entities between a, a dog and a family member, or between you and the cashier at, a, at your favorite store, etc. Okay, so where are we going to go with all this? Well, we're going to learn how to apply object oriented ways, paradigms, to engineering applications. We're going to look at how that applies to examples of instrumentation. Okay, or mechatronics, or graphical user interfaces. But basically, you know, from the perspective of this course, we're going to be looking at how do you connect your PC, Windows or, or Mac or whatever, to an Arduino and then back again. That, and, and we're going to be looking at instrumentation, mechatronics, and graphical user interfaces from that perspective. Okay, how we get that Arduino to talk to your PC. All right. Now, object orients or, or object oriented. Uh, approaches. We've got observation, modeling, and execution. So we, we take a look at um, sort of in the in the quote-unquote real world, we have these entities. And these entities could be people. They could be like uh, Jim or Shan Yi or Jonathan or Julie. Um, we have entities. They can be um, ob uh, numbers and, and sort of uh, numerical things as well. Okay. So at compile time, we have in, in Java, we have classes, and these are basically definitions of templates, plans, okay? And and so you might see the word class, and then that class has a name associated with like person. And in it, it's got variables like a name or a weight or a height, okay? Or in this case, that should actually be point, not pot, int. Okay, but another class, a class point, and that has um, double precision floating point, um, characteristics inside okay and one of these would be the variable x and the other one would be the variable y and then at runtime so once once we finish writing up our program and we're actually running it then we have objects and these objects are um, uh, the creations of um, the plans you're taking the plan and you're making it to actually something you're instantiating them okay and so you would have uh, a person and that person would be who ha would have a name Jim and would weigh 80 kilograms and would have a height of 1.8 meters and then you have another person that other person could be Jonathan with a you know with those characteristics as well you could also have some sort of arbitrary thing um, uh, uh, an object called p1 okay of, of type point and it has these numeric characteristics we could have another object called p2 of class or type point okay with those numerical characteristics inside, in, inside. Now, there's some tutorial videos that you can sort of click to, and we can make a link of that later as well. Okay, that'll walk you through the idea of object orientedness or object orientation. Um, now, it's Im important to point out that this is a programming paradigm, and it's based on observations of real world entities, objects and things, and, and people, and, and that sort of thing. And we model the attributes and the behaviors, okay, um, that we see in real world things uh, as a set of entities in a single class. So basically attributes would be 
um, like like nouns or adjectives okay and and behaviors themselves would be more along the lines of verbs okay so we execute the program by creating instances of classes which interact in a way that is analogous to these real world entities so really object oriented programming is based on um, basically a view of the world okay and the the assumption underlying it is that well if it works in the real world then we can and it and it's intuitive for for people to understand then maybe we can create programs that are just as intuitive and work in similar ways all right so in real life lots of entities exist and interact with one another so for instance people can gain or lose weight they can marry the divorce they can come together or leave they can get older they can change over time cars can move from one point to another and just like people they can get older and change over time and um and and you can change them right you got clients so clients for a bank for instance clients can initiate transactions with banks so they can interact with each other through banks etc okay in terms of entities entities possess attributes okay so these are characteristics of the entity a characteristic of a person would be their weight or their height for instance they exhibit behavior so they could walk or lift objects or interact with banks they can interact with each other they can interact with different other entities now with object oriented programming our objective is to solve problems programmatically by classifying entities of interest we we say we want that kind of object and that kind of object and this kind of object but not that object and and we we determine what is of interest to the particular application that we have entities in the same class share common attributes and behaviors and we manipulate data that represent these entities each entity is represented by specific values okay so so this is sort of a, an overview of what object oriented programming is in the next presentation we will talk go into more depth about what object oriented programming is classes objects etc all right take care everyone